Saturday morning. That means it's time for Tricks of the Trade. Phone lines are open. Love to talk to you this morning, 731-891-6161. Or if you'd rather text, the Victory Honda text line is available for you also, 731-410-7560. And here's Jackson's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, we'll try that again. I got you now. Yeah, now? now you're now you can good morning. All right, I can good morning you. How are you? And hope everybody else out there is doing uh, just wonderful this uh, sunny morning. Maybe yeah, it man. won't be too hot. No, I think it? I think it's going to be better than it has in West Tennessee for the past week and a half. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and Latin, we got a little rain chance for the next few days, so that's okay. Yeah. We got, right, we'll take we got a big rain chance yesterday afternoon. Oh, Lordy. Man, that thing was nasty, wasn't it? We, I was out on the job site yesterday, and, and I was with one of my fellows, and, and we was working on an outdoor electric box by a swimming pool, <laughs> and that clap of thunder hit. Uh-huh. It hit so hard, the ground shook and, and stirred the wasp off the nest that were inside that breaker box. Whoa. We all got flogged with I bet so. I flying did. things. Man. It was a... Uh, it's kind of spooky there for a few oh, minutes yeah, yesterday. You, know, you had a lot. You were around a lot of water when that thing hit. Yeah. Now, that's not fun. Well, it's not fun. We looked at one another and said, uh, "Time to go to the house." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Who wants to go close the cover on that wasp nest? Oh over there? man, man, they stirred up. You know, that's a surprise when you're out there working on a a, a 200 amp panel and you yeah. you just thinking everything's wonderful and you go and sling that door open and you get. Yeah. Big old nest and big old red ones, oh, you know. Red wasp is this nest about that big around. Yeah, they were as uh, stirred up as you was. And, uh, <laughs> but man, it it the ground. I mean, it vibrated yesterday. That thing hit that thunder, oh, it, and it was. It, yeah, I mean, down here you could you could feel the windows rattle a little bit in in, in there, and the old, and then the bottom just fell out straight down, pouring down rain, man. Yeah. But, you know, we'll take what we get and yeah. move on to the next item. Get, get, a little, get a little win. And speaking of get what you get, I saw yeah. something on the side of the road during that last little storm. Yeah. That just made me reminisce a little bit this morning. <laughs> okay. And, um, you know, uh, with all these modern things we have around here, there mm-hmm. are some a few basic things that you still have, but they're in a modern way. Yes, of course. And and what I'm talking about is I was uh, drove by a construction site after that last little storm, and uh, apparently they f- forgot to put a little water in the jug, so to speak, and the outhouse blew over. Oh no! You know these little blue outhouses you see out yeah. of construction sites. Porta potty. Porta potties. Porta John. And uh, you know people think those are long gone, but we use them a lot. At, uh, in construction sites sure. and special events, you yep. know, you see them lined up at the the fair or the. Yeah, I guarantee you, there's a bunch of them downtown today for the big uh, birthday bash kickoff. That, well, yeah. you, you think so? Uh, well, I hope so. <laughs> I doubt so. Otherwise, lock your office door if you work downtown. <laughs> And that is happening today. Yeah, two hundred yeah. years of Jackson 200 today. Years. That's amazing. That's, That's amazing. a long time. Yeah, we've uh, you and I have seen a lot of it too. You know. Yeah, we have. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember. Let's see. Uh, the last one I went to was fifty years ago. The Susquecentennial. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they had Straw Hat Day. Yeah. Downtown, and uh, I think Mister uh, Former Mayor Conger. Yeah. The the, yeah. the granddaddy. Bob Conger. Yeah, yeah Bob mm-hmm. uh, was in charge of that. And that was a lot of fun. I remember that. I was down there when yeah. that happened. And they I, were encouraging everybody to grow uh, a sideburns or beards and mutton, right. mutton chops back that's in those right. days. That's right. Sure were. And I, I, it's, uh, that's about the time my, my first attempt at it happened. And uh, my daddy was not happy. He <laughs> didn't like that stuff. No, 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 no. But I said, look, you know, it's for the celebration. You know, we got we got to do. I even almost went to the point where to keep him happy, I almost went down to one of the local tonsorial parlor, uh, parlors, like they called them back in those days, and and bought a fake one, a you know, fake mustache, just to stick it uh-huh. on when I was out at whatever function it was. But I didn't do that. I wound up growing one anyway. You could get those if you just went and got the Groucho Mark glasses to go with it. <laughs> That's right. Just cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> Little Elmer's glue here, <laughs> there, <laughs> dab it in the right spots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, I saw that outhouse uh, the, the, over on its side, and it made me wonder, you know, the people like me and like you might have actually experienced the real deal. 
yeah. back in the day. Yeah, the ones that were built into the ground. Yeah, yeah. built into. Yeah, yeah. My my grandpa had one. He was a my grandpa was a, a sharecropper over in Arkansas, and uh, out beside the little tenant house uh, where he lived, he he had a an outhouse in the back. And yep. I remember going out there when I was a youngster, and um, I looked down that hole, and I saw what I saw, and I looked up at my mama, and I said, you want me to do what? (laughs) (laughs) And you got to just set up there. So, you know, I I just wanted to to, kind of reminisce about that a little bit because it was a part of uh, Southern culture. Uh, to have an outhouse because you didn't have an indoor toilet. Those were more for the uh, the, the more influential, affluent people. And uh, most people just had an outhouse yep. in the backyard. If you lived out, you know, out of town where you didn't have indoor plumbing. And uh, you would go into some of them and they were decorated differently. You, uh, you know, you had your board when you went in and it had a hole there uh-huh to which you sit on yes now if you went into one that was a little larger and they had many children <laughs> before they stepped up to indoor plumbing you had a two-holer yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah and uh it was i one of the things i don't remember is you would think with the way things were and where things went there would be a, a an odor associated with those you would think that yeah but it wouldn't i mean you had this little screen wire that you got off your rabbit hutch uh, <laughs> that you'd put on the back side of that down low next to the brown stuff, and it would vent, and the odor stayed on the outside, and you were on the inside. And then there was the proverbial 60-penny nail that was driven on the wall on the inside that you put your toilet paper on. Those of you that graduated up to <laughs> toilet paper. Yeah. Uh, originally, that's where all the magazines went out there. Uh, Sears Roebuck or Montgomery Ward catalog was nailed out there, and you would use a a piece of that paper, and and you would hold it in your hand and scrunch it up and roll it around to soften it. Yeah. And uh, then you took care of business. But uh, as outhouses adapted and became a little more fancier, people learned how to actually mount a toilet seat from a city toilet on it. Yep, I've seen to those where, too. To yeah. where you could sit down properly. And I guess that's where they first start started teaching how to raise the lid. That's when the <laughs> women got down, involved yeah. and then put it back down. Yep, and, yep. and I remember all of that. Yep. And then they got to be concreted. And mm. then I just remember this like it was yesterday. Hee Haw came on T V. Yep. And uh, they always amplified the stories about outhouses a lot of times. And there was a skit that always came on about the outhouse turning over or Mm -hmm. blowing over. Or even as a prank, you would turn Turn one over over, with someone in it. But my grandmother, other side of the family, Mm -hmm. had an outhouse. Right. And I used to drive that little Cub Cadet tractor she had up there to help doing some plowing. And I decided <laughs> one day I was going to do a hee-haw skit. True uh-huh. story. So I went and got me a log chain. And I wrapped it around the outhouse and put it to the hitch on the back of that tractor. Right. And I'm going to run off towards the, the, the purple hull pea patch. <laughs> and I'm going to yank that thing out of the ground and let it fall over like right. they did in, in Hee Haw. In Hee Haw, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there I did. Next thing I know, I'm looking up at the sky <laughs> because <laughs> my papa apparently wanted a firm foundation oh, on yeah. everything, <laughs> and he put that outhouse, the slats embedded in concrete. You wasn't turning that one over. I hear that. So anyway, that's my little story about outhouses, wow. and, and I, I can't help but reminisce about those even yeah. today because it was just a part of culture uh, of the way of life back then. It's before we had uh, the the modern amenities. Yes. And um, I still get fussed at for not putting the seat back down, just like I did just, back when yeah, I was a little Even though fun. it's inside and convenient. Now. That's right. Yeah. You know, what yeah. people want, they're always talking about something, so... 
just kind of one of those things. So I have no idea why I wandered off into the outhouse this morning, but I just thought about that yep. when I saw one turned over on the construction site the other day. We, uh, my former partner and I, back when we were in the appraisal business, oh, we, yeah. we had a contract we were doing for the state of Tennessee doing some right-of-way uh, acquisitions in a rural county here in West Tennessee, and there was a series of houses that was owned by one owner. There, there were like four of them in a row down the, down the right-of-way on, right. this, on this road there. Old houses, shotgun type, you know, not, not much. So, so we said, okay, I'll take the first one, you take the second one, then I'll go three and four, and we'll just, you know, we'll just move, move on down. I'll meet you down at the end down there. So we go through the houses, and I come out of my first house about the same time he came out of his, his first house. And he said, wait just a minute, I need to go back in there. Something, something's missing. And I said, what is it? He said, I'm not sure yet, but we need to go. He said, go back in there and make sure you don't have something missing. So I went back there, looked at my notes and everything. I came out and I said, yeah, there is something missing. He said, yeah, mine too. He said, you ain't got a bathroom either, do you? I said, no, I don't. We checked number three and four, none of those four houses. This is in the mid to late 80s now. Mm -hmm. And these houses were rented to people to live in. None of those four houses had a bathroom. And I said, well, did you find any, any sign of how they take care of business? And he said, yes, I'm afraid I did. And I walked into that second house with them, and over in the corner of the bedroom was a shower curtain, a potty chair, and a five-gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. So we go to the third house, and he said, wait a minute, I figured it out. He sa I said, what do you mean? He said, come here, I'll show you. I figured it out. He said, see that little path through the grass right there where the grass is, not, is mowed? I said, yeah. He said, there's your bathroom. <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> we walked back there, and there was one outhouse servicing all four of those houses. Yeah. Yeah. In 1980-something. Now, now, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. Well, it is, but you didn't have to worry about clogged pipes back <laughs> then. <laughs> That is true. That is true. Oh. Yeah. Our things have changed. You know, a lot of things have changed. We, we, we get on the engineers quite a bit, you know, yeah. for the stupid things that, that, that they do these days. But uh, I'm, glad they, I'm glad somebody figured out how to, how to move that pipe under the ground close to the house and then inside the house, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, but, but then again, if the weather was bad or it was cold, that's what back porches were for. True. You know. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's just the way it was. So. Uh. Oh, folks, oh. The folks that never had much country living, they just don't know what they miss, do they? They, they really don't, and they, they, they go, ew. ew. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and, uh, you know, my, uh, my wife, she uh, come from up north, uh -huh. and uh, they didn't understand that concept either. Right. And, of course, when I, when I came and met her and had to go home for the first time to meet mm -hmm. her folks, up in Yankeeville, up right. there, they thought I was going to show up with bib overalls and a corn cob pipe. <laughs> Those shoes. They really had. Uh, <laughs> they really. It, it was when I stepped off the plane in a three-piece suit. They looked around, wanted to know where the hillbilly was. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Shocker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but then just you know, just just to keep keep them from being embarrassed. You say, Yeah, I am. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm right here. What y'all want? <laughs> Y'all take turns listening to me talk. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You're listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen on this Saturday morning. And uh, we're going to take a quick a commercial break here from some of our sponsors. And uh, we are uh, always privileged to have three uh, title sponsors here on the show. Quality Outdoor Products, West 10 Fence Company, and Economy Siding and Windows. And uh, uh, Economy Siding and Windows will be at my house soon. Talked to Stormy the other day. There you go. And uh, he came and got all the measurements he needed. We're going to we're going to put on some gutter guards, which you, you you see those things advertised on TV. And there's probably a dozen or more different types out there. That's right. But the one that Stormy has, the one that he recommends, is the one that I wanted in the first place. That's right. You've used them. I'm about to use them, but I understand they do a great job. They do, and. Uh you won't have no stuff in the gutter. I'll put it that there way. There you go. That's and, what I need. and you don't want it anyway. And I got a lot of troubles around my house, and you're going to get yours solved too. So yep. uh, it's a good deal. We'll have to have a testimonial. <laughs> yeah. uh, if he gets them on before the, the leaves fall, that's yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll have a testimonial. You take a picture of your neighbors cleaning out their gutters, yeah. and then you stand over there by yours and just <laughs> smile. Look, they're empty. <laughs> 
Yeah, they, that's not all that they do, obviously, at, uh, at Economy Siding Windows. I know they do a lot of work for you and your company, uh, replacing vinyl siding or adding mm -hmm. vinyl siding mm -hmm. or replacement windows. Windows, uh, again, that's, that's you, you see a lot of those things advertised, but they all are not, you're not comparing apples and oranges a lot of times. We're going to hear something later on in the show about that that I bet you've never heard before. Okay. We're going to explain that. Because I had a young little whippersnapper try to throw vocabulary at me this week. <laughs> and we had, a li we had a little time in the middle of the aisle in one of the big box stores. All right. I can't so we'll wait talk to, about that later on. I can't wait to on. hear that. Economy siding and windows. When it comes to time for you to redo your house or fix up what you got, siding, windows, patio covers, gutters, gutter guards, they do it all. Just call out there. It's Stormy. He's the owner, the operator, and the man to talk to. EconomySiding.com or 422-3828. We're going to take two minutes. We'll be right back. Jackson in West Tennessee. Dustin Ring here again. And I'm... We're going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. It became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. Today we're going to make an old-fashioned cocktail, one of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are. And it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky meal, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're gonna take that Kentucky Sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. But if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. make a difference and make a donation, go to AutismSociety.org. The WTJS 93.1, Saturday morning. That equals John Allen's Tricks of the Trades. John's with us this morning. Phone line is open at 731-891-6161 or the Victory Honda text line 731-410-7560. Here's John. Oh, welcome back, everybody. And uh, do remember, we've got a lot of festivities going on in downtown yep. Jackson today. It is our 200-year anniversary. And in the older part of town, uh, right around Shannon and Lafayette, is where everything is happening, down by the farmer's market and in that vacant lot next to uh, Blacksmith's Restaurant. A lot of things going on starting about 2 o'clock uh, things for the kids some for older people a little storytelling lots of music and then about six o'clock things will crank up at the amp and uh have a lot of good music down there of all varieties so, yeah yeah uh, good yeah. place to go I'm trying to think if i can do it from from memory because i don't have my my uh, my notes with me but i think uh there is a, um, a a mass choir that's going to sing early early on in that program and then the uh, the, the regular program is Carita Cole is one of the uh, one of the uh, performers tonight. Uh, the double wides and um, Magi. Magi are gonna finish that. Now that's now. a show right oh, there. Magi puts on a great. show. 
Man, they've been they've been doing it for a long time, and they know how to make it happen. Fulton can make your hips swiggle. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, a lot of great stuff going on downtown at the Amp, and uh, there's another stage down there where some of the entertainment I think is going on. And thanks for the kids. They got uh, I noticed one of the uh, food trucks is coming in is the caramel corn truck. Mm. That's where you'll find me at some point today. <laughs> <laughs> Love that stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's going to yeah. wander on down to what they call now Triangle Park. Yeah. Which is uh, where uh, Lafayette and uh, Main Street come together and used to hit Poplar. Mm-hmm. And now we got up it in called Dareways because it leads yeah. to the airport out yep, there. it do. So, it do. Uh, but anyway, head on downtown to Jackson, in downtown Jackson today. And yep. Have a little fun. It's all free. Yeah. The celebration goes all year long, so there'll be other things coming up. This is mm. just a kickoff today. You can wear out a good extension cord playing that many days. You better believe it. You yeah. better believe it. It's going to be fun, though. And we, you know, we're, we're, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, celebrate us for a change, you know, you know. That's we, a good thing. Yeah. And all our differences. Yep. We, uh, we're, we're different and we got problems, but we're still, we're still who we are and we're proud of who we are. Isn't so, that the truth? Go on Isn't down that... and join in a little bit. That's right. Hey, you talked about something on Thursday's show that I want to follow up on because okay. I might have led you astray on something. Not a, You wouldn't do that. Well, not intentionally, but you know, you talked about you had a screw that had wallered out. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, I had and, a couple of them. And I told you to take a toothpick mm-hmm. and shove it in there and squirt a little Elmer's glue right. in there and then tighten that thing back down and everything's fine. Right. And that is true most of the time. But I had something brought to my attention. Someone called me up and asked me something Friday. And they said, well, we got that problem. And we've tried the toothpicks. And it started out working pretty good, but then it didn't. And and I said, what do you mean? What are you screwing into? He says, well, I've got a particle board Hmm. that it's done that to. And it didn't hold too well in particle board. So I'm 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 here to correct myself a little bit. Okay. If you have a situation where you've got a watered out screw, and maybe you're screwing into MDF uh, uh, modified density fiber board or a particle board, and it's a little fuzzy around the edges, and maybe it's starting to fray a little bit, the toothpick may not hold because you don't have anything firm to hold everything against. Right. But what you can do is take a drill bit and where you got a little hole there where the screw was, take a quarter inch drill bit and drill through the hole to make it bigger. And then go to the store and get you some dowel rods, about a quarter of an inch dowel rod, same right. size as your drill bit. If you don't have a, if you do a three eighths hole, get a three eighths inch dowel rod. Right. And you'll glue that dowel rod into that hole and then take you a little saw and yeah. cut it off to where everything's flush, and then drill you a pilot hole for your new screw into the dowel rod, and then you can tighten it up, and all's right with the world. Then. Yeah. So two ways of doing it to get the same results, <clears throat> and uh, if you want to give that a try, or anybody else else out there listening, that'll yeah. take care of just about any kind of hole you got. Okay, but my in my case, it is a a masonry wall, and I'm using masonry screws or bolts. Mm. that are made for that that deal so you think you think the toothpick thing would still i plan on trying to do that this afternoon matter of fact uh well now you got a little situation there have you ever used tap cons not that i'm that's aware a, of that's a masonry <laughs> screw is it blue yep uh, that's what i got that's what you and it's watered out yeah, yeah. Well, what ha- it was holding a flag, a uh, 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 flag holder. You know, those little brackets that go on the wall that you stick your flagpole in. It was holding one of those up there, and it's been there for 16 years, so it's done its job. But over the years, the movement of that flag had had uh, loosened one. I did what you what you told me to do earlier on on that one, and put some pipe dope in there, and then actually wrapped that Tapcon screw with some uh, plumber's tape. Right. And screwed it back in there. And it held for a couple of months until this last big blow came through and it ripped both of them out. Well, that may not be so much the screw, but the masonry, because sometimes it kind of uh, gets a little dusty. Yeah. But, you know, you might just need to get you a bigger screw on that. Yep. Uh, run up here to one of the big box stores and uh, get just a little bigger Tapcon and put in there. Tapcons are great. 
but they're a little peculiar. You got to really watch that you bore the pilot hole the size it tells you to bore it. Right. Because if you don't get it right, it won't grab hold and it'll strip out real quick. So, uh, might want a situation. I thought I thought you were dealing with you know in siding or wood or something when no, we were it's, talking it's, the other it's day. No, it's actually in the brick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, driving that wedge in there. Uh, we'll do a good job. You could take a wood peg and drive it in that hole and then screw your screw in on top of it, and, and it'll hold most of the time. So right. I think it'll take care of your situation. Yeah. All right. We'll give it a shot and see. Yep. Another another great trick of the trade. Well, you know, we'll hit on something every now and then. Sure. You know, I got to tell you a little funny story. All right. Walked into a store the other day in another town to check to see if by chance – they had a window. Went over to the window department. Mm-hmm. And here come this little whippersnapper over here. <laughs> and he said, sir, can I help you? And he, I said, well, you know anything about windows? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. i tell you anything you want to know about windows. And I said, and I knew I had a hot shot on my hands yes. here. Said, and I let, said, let the fun begin. That's right. <laughs> so I said, I want to get properly insulated, sealed with all my thermal terms met because I have a large fenestration at my house. Mm-hmm. A moment of silence <laughs> was right there. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, excuse me? I said, yes, I need to accommodate this fenestration I have at my house. (laughs) And I could see the wheels turning. (laughs) He didn't know what a fenestration was. Yes, he was about to die because he couldn't get to Google. (laughs) (laughs) But he was reaching for his phone. I bet he was. (laughs) So I says, you don't understand. I got these two fenestrations in my wall. And I knew he didn't know what he told me. I said, a fenestration is a hole. Yeah. It's a hole in the wall. Let me break it down for you, Sonny. I got a door and I got a window. Yeah. And I want a good window to go in these people's homes. I need you to help me to show you, show me what you got. He says, well, okay. So we go over. He He's a little red. <laughs> and he, he goes over and he's, and instead of starting to flatter me with his knowledge, mm-hmm. he yeah. said, here's what we got. <laughs> <laughs> the old fallback line, right? Yeah, here's what we got. <laughs> I said, well, let's look at these stickers a little bit. And uh, I learned something several months ago. If you put in a window, the, the, these windows, you you got to meet federal and local guidelines now for, yeah. for the way they're made. And don't ever, don't ever take a sticker off a window until you get it inspected because the inspector will not like that. He will chastise you firmly <laughs> because you, you can't just go out here to the store and buy a window anymore like you used to. Right. It, it has to meet the, the codes. And it has to have certain factors. You know, we got oh, U, yeah. U factors and R factors and all kinds of factors to look at. And those little stickers they put on there tell you what you got to have. Right. And uh, so the first thing you want to look at on these windows is to make sure it's, it's a double pane window. Now, we talk a lot about double pane windows, and then they came out up in the northern part of the country, even triple pane windows. We don't need those down here. Uh, and the cost of a triple pane versus a double pane is so much different. Yeah. You're not going to realize those savings and utility bills for many, many years. So get you a good double pane window. That's the first thing you want to look for. Okay. And then you want to look for the U factor. On that thing. Now, the U factor is a, a scientific term to determine keeping the heat in. It's for heat loss. Okay. And you want that to be below a 0.35. Okay. 
In this area, I think we're looking at around a point three two. And, and the, you know, in northern places where it gets really cold, they go to like a point two seven. And if those factors are not right that are adopted for our region, you could get in trouble with your inspector if you're building a, a new house. Right. Then you want to look to see if it's got a low E coating on it. And when you have a low E coating, all that is is a, is a transparent coating on the glass that allows all the light in, but it keeps the sun rays out. It bounces some of that uh, ultraviolet stuff off. So you want one with, with low E. Right. And, uh, and then you get to what they call a solar gain coefficient. Yeah, you can tell a white coat made this up. Yes, indeed. And that is a factor to keep the sun's rays reflected. That's from the heat on the outside coming into your house. Uh And you want to keep that going, and you want that at about a .32 or lower. The lower the number, the better the window is. Right. Now, we used to didn't have to worry about stuff like that. And... And then when you go ahead and put them in, and what I'm leading up to on all of this is where most people mess up. You can go out and buy one of the best windows you can get, and you can put it in your fenestration, (laughs) your hole in the wall. (laughs) And then still have a big enough draft around the perimeter of it that will blow the candles off your birthday cake, you know. Yeah. And and it's because the little things that get left out. I see people go to great effort to uh, get a good window, but I've always said about not only windows but doors and really anything, installation is the key and, and how to put them on. And when you have a rough opening in the house, your rough opening is always a little bigger than what your window is so you can put it in the hole and right. fasten it around the perimeter and caulk it up seal it up or in the case of vinyl windows you have to put this special tape on it to seal it to where you don't have anything creepy crawly coming in through the edges or or a draft so to speak right but when you are retrofitting these windows into older homes and you take your window trim off and your door trim off of your opening There's a little gap. Normally, it's about an inch between the window frame and your two before that's empty. And that's where a lot of people mess up, and that's where they actually have most of their heat loss. Uh, The heat getting out or the heat getting in comes through that area because they didn't take a little piece of leftover insulation and stuff it around the crack. Yeah, I've seen people do that, and now I know why. That is real, real important to getting, uh, keeping your energy within your house. Keep the, like the cold, keep the cold on the inside and keep the sun on the outside. Right. Now, some people mess up. You know, you can take a good thing and go too far with it. When they, when you don't have any insulation to poke around the hole, around your uh, fenestration, uh, You'll see people go out now because they advertise it on TV as this is the surefire cure-all for everything to oh, yeah. stop any kind of air leakage whatsoever is this spray foam. Yeah, for sure. You don't ever <laughs> want to use spray foam, or spray foam around a window or a door. And the reason being, when that stuff gets hard, it swells. Yes, it does. And it will squinch up a window so tight that you can't raise it or your door you will not be able to open it up because it'll it'll push those frames in and you're talking about tight yeah you're not going to open it it, at all so do not under any circumstances use spray foam uh around a door or a window because you'll regret that, and uh, that'll that'll make a big mess. You'll be in there with a with a screwdriver and a mm-hmm. utility knife trying to dig all that stuff back out to relax your window or door <laughs> to where things will be able to 
to to work properly. Yeah. So Ooh, that's, now, na- that's nasty stuff and, too. And, and it is. And and uh, we'll talk a little more about some little tricks that lead into the siding that people don't think about. And I think we probably got to take another little break or something about now. Yep. So we'll get into that after a while. So y'all just stay tuned. Yep, we're gonna take a break after we remind you about another one of our great sponsors, West End Fence Company. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bet they were busy this past week taking uh, care of all this wind around here. Guarantee it. I, I, a friend of mine who owns a, a business not too far from here had a fence between their property and the and the neighboring property. And I drove through there the other day after that storm and noticed that his, uh, his fence was uh, laying in the parking lot. Yeah. I said, well, what happened? He said, the gust of wind came down through here, and it's, it, uh, it did like mine did in that big blow we had back a year or so ago. It literally snapped those 4 by 4s off at the ground. That's right. It'll you, got, you got about two inches of, of wood sticking up, and that's what happened. And I told him, I said, well, uh, I said, the 668-5959 to get that thing fixed. That's and right. he said, well, who is that? And I said, that's West End Fence Company. Call them, and yeah. they'll come out and get you taken care of. They can do it. They make all kinds of fences no matter what you have. You may have a, a wrought iron fence or a barbed wire fence or a wooden fence or whatever it is. They can fix it, and they'll put it in. They'll do it right, and uh, they'll get there, get in, get out, get cleaned up. Mm-hmm. And all, they'll, all you'll need to do at that point is write them a check. There you go. Have you ever seen the storm come through and blow down a chain link fence? Yes. <laughs> Looks like they'd be it'll, so porous that the wind would go right. No, through. it'll it'll bend them over. Oh yeah, yeah, that I've seen. But you know, when people had chain link fences, now here, here's what happens on a chain link fence. People have a chain link fence up there, and all of a sudden they decided they're going to put a swimming pool in the backyard. Uh huh. So they'll put the swimming pool and the 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 the, the little daughter who is starting to get a little shapely. Uh huh. She's laying out by the pool and <laughs> finds all the neighbors are watching. <laughs> But they got a chain link fence, and they're uh-huh. going right through, uh, seeing right through it. So they came up with these little metal fins that look like the big old metal Venetian blinds, uh-huh. and you'd slide them at forty-five degree angles yeah. into that chain link fence for a privacy fence. Yeah, kind of basket weave. Yeah, in there. it works yeah. like a charm until <laughs> the wind blows, and that blind <laughs> catches the wind, and it'll lay it over just like a wooden fence. Man, unbelievable. It may not snap the post off, but no, it'll, it'll but bend it, it over, and you can't straighten it back up. No, 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 no. It no. gets there, it's there. You'll be rocking the mortar in the ground back and forth is all you'll be doing. <laughs> That's, <so>. true. <laughs> That's true. West End Fence Company, chain link, ornamental iron, uh, construction fencing, uh, commercial, residential. They do it all. They do a great job. John, John uses them uh, as one of his subcontractors. Uh, he sent them out to my house, and they did an excellent job in, uh, in uh, replacing and repairing my fence. So uh, they're good folks. And you can catch them at, as we said, 668-5959. Or online, you can uh, talk to Ricky at the uh, sales department, rpennington1, the number one, at yahoo.com. That'll do it. We're going to take two minutes. We'll be right back with more Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. Hey, guys. This is Mark here from Jackson. Hey, Tennessee, I'm Kix Brooks. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. This is Arkansas, and so is this, and this. It's a place where your adventures can lead to wonders thousands of feet below ground, or to views high above it all. Arkansas is full of things you've never seen, and things worth seeing again and again. So if you're looking for a place to create legendary stories, or just make lasting moments, it's all right here. This is Arkansas. This is the natural state. Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. Looking for an easy way to compare bids from contractors you can trust? 
Search BBB.org for the type of work you need, then request a quote. Just click Get Quotes. You'll soon receive estimates from BBB accredited businesses, businesses which meet BBB standards of trust. Peace of mind is just one search away. BBB. Start with trust. It's a Saturday morning in Jackson in West Tennessee. Tricks of the Trade with John Allen on your radio at 93.1 WTJS. The call-in number, 731-891-6161. And the Victory Honda text line, and we were about to go to a text here in just a moment. Victory Honda text line is 731-410-7560. Text line is uh, up and running this morning, John. We have one for you. Okay. It says, morning, y'all. Oh, by the way, you can also catch us right now on y'all.com. Okay. Leave right. the apostrophe out, please, Y-A-L-L dot com, and you can see that anytime you want to after this morning. So, y'all, it says, morning, y'all. John, can you recommend a cleanup company to remove junk from a foreclosed house I bought? Junk outside and inside. wonder if it's in the city. Don't know. Texter, shoot me another quick one there. Is it in the city or in the county? Well, if, if it's, it's in, in the city, it's in the county. I understand that part. <laughs> some people don't realize that, especially that. government. Especially when it comes to taxes, they don't understand that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, if it's inside, uh, you can put that stuff. I mean, inside the, the city, you can put that stuff out at the curb. You might want to check the new restrictions when you do, though. It's in the county. It's in the county. Thank you, mm. You know, I'm, I'm drawing a blank as far as the name of this company. The, we used a demolition company that was kind of local here lately and uh, did a great job. I just can't remember their contact information right now. Uh, but there there are people that will come in and like gut the inside of a house out and and then take it out and haul it off. In the county, you might not be able to get it picked up. You'll have to do all that yourself. Right. But uh, if it's in the city, you can uh, put a lot of it out on the curb. Like Jim said, you might want to check your local restrictions. Uh, I'm not real sure if the city comes by and picks it up with their little claw or if waste management come by, comes by. Uh, of course, you can always put a dumpster out there and uh, lo- fill it full of debris, and they'll come pick it up. But, uh, you yeah, know, that's a question I'm going to have to check into. And, and I'll try to get back with you on next either Thursday or Saturday show and give you some names of someone. But right now, I just can't get anything off the top of my bald head. <laughs> there you go. Except a reflection, right? There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, 731-410-7560. You can talk to John through the text if you would like. The Victory Honda text, 731-891-6161 on the phone line. We've got about 15 minutes left in the proceedings this morning. And uh, we have reminisced and gone uh, waxed poetic about uh, outhouses and other things. that Waxed poetic? Yes, that's what they say. Um, You didn't know we were waxing, did you? I didn't know I was waxing. Wait till I pull that tape off your stomach. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Uh, You only do that once in a lifetime. Oh, Oh, man, I don't even want to do that. No, 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 no. I got to give some folks a little warning this morning. Now, we talk about, like one of our sponsors, uh, uh, Economy Siding. Mm Mm-hmm. They do a great job on putting up vinyl siding and uh, uh, making the outside of your home maintenance free. Right. But sometimes that can be too good of a thing. And you really kind of got to watch something. And, and here's what I'm talking about. A lot, a lot of people out there have vinyl or, or decide to put vinyl siding on uh, the outside of their home, and maybe they're going over some of that old ugly masonite yeah. that is there. And 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 masonite was it was a good product originally, but if you don't keep it properly sealed and maintained, and your 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 butt joints sealed up, it becomes a nightmare, and you can't fix it. About the only thing you can do is replace it with a different type of siding. But most people will go to vinyl and yeah. go over top of it. Yeah. And, and that's that's a good thing. Now, when you put vinyl siding on top of anything, it gives you a good outside appearance that is maintenance-free. Basically, all you got to do is, is wash it. And you don't have to worry about it until you find out you've had another problem that you didn't know anything about. And you didn't even know to look for it because you had no 
telltale signs of what was going on. And that is, let's say you've got a, a plumbing pipe going up your outside wall and it starts leaking on the roof mm -hmm. or an electrical mask, which is normally the biggest culprit. You know, you got a breaker box that's in your outside wall right, right. on the other side of your meter and here comes the vinyl siding people and you can't really easily pull a meter. It just costs a lot of money and run in behind it. So they will butt up to each side of the meter. And and then you've got a leak and you don't know it up on the roof. And the water's running down that metal pole and it's leaking in the wall. And you're sitting there thinking everything looks lovely. And all this time uh, it's rotting on the inside. Or maybe if it gets wet all the way down to the base, it will attract termites and ants and other little varmints that are looking for a water source to come up in your wall and stay and just have a picnic lunch up there for a while. Went into a home the other day that had this happening. The house looked great on the outside, but they had for a long period of time a leak around the electrical riser. And what made her realize that she had a problem was she came out one day and saw that pole leaning hmm. because it doesn't eat out all the decking up on the roof and the weight of the wire running from the telescope pole up to the transformer was pulling on it. Sure. And uh, we opened it up and found not only was the decking bad, but the squirrels had made a pretty good nest in there. Ooh. They were going in beside that mask. Sure. Made a good nest in there. And uh, But when we went, we were actually changing the service out to move it to get that uh, pipe out of the valley of the house, which shouldn't have been there to, to begin with. Right. But when we moved it and we reached up to grab that old meter base, it literally fell off in our hands because all of the uh, masonite that was behind that siding had disintegrated. Mm -hmm. Now there you were looking at a perfectly good vinyl siding job that looked great, but there was nothing behind it. You could just push on the on the wall and it just shake back and forth. The studs were rotted, the siding was rotted, the sheathing was rotted, and there was a lot of problems going on there, which turned into a pretty good little job. So while we tell folks that even when you have a good company come out and put vinyl siding on and it's maintenance free, you still got to be careful because there are some things that are going on uh, in a wall that uh, might cause you to have a little uh, attention to it, especially if you have a roof leak. Yeah. We've got something coming in. Yeah, this is about, <coughs> excuse me, about vinyl siding. It says, if siding was placed on a wood-sided farmhouse, because the owner didn't want to paint, and I don't mind painting, should I remove it? No, not necessarily. The idea is you just got to make sure that moisture, water, doesn't get in the wall. But speaking of that little scenario, there's a little tip I want to pass on to you about that. I see this happening quite a bit, and especially with the do-it-yourselfers out there that may have a, a building on the outside and... They decide, well, I'm not going to paint that anymore. Yeah. I'm just going to put vinyl siding on it. So they'll go out to the big box stores, and they'll buy siding, and they'll buy the, even the little house wrap and, or the little little quarter-inch styrofoam panels that they'll put on there and, mm -hmm. and make it look so pretty. And they'll put it up themselves because they've seen it done on TV. There you go. Except they leave out one little bitty very, very important thing about putting on vinyl siding you know on a piece of siding uh at the top of it there's a a line that's got a bunch of holes in it it's where you put your nails in right and looks simple enough you start at the bottom and you snap the bottom into the piece underneath you and then you tack it along the top and you snap another piece in you tap it along the top. It's really, it's a no-brainer, yeah. except for one thing, driving those nails in. If you drive those nails home, as we say yeah. in the business, in other words, you drive them all the way into the wood, 
when the sun starts hitting that siding, you're going to see it doing this. It's yep. going to start bucking and, and creeping on the wall. And then at night, it'll lay back down. And then it'll start <laughs> creeping. And it might be winter time, and it looks flat, and the sun comes out, and it starts creeping. Yep. You cannot drive those nails all the way in. When you're driving them in, you need to stop when that head of that nail is about any, uh, at least an eighth of an inch or no more than three-sixteenths of an inch from going in. You're not wanting to pin that siding to the wall where it is. Those holes that you're putting that nail in, they're not holes. They're not round. They're slots. And the idea is that vinyl siding needs to move right, and come stay moving all the time because it expands and contracts so don't ever drive one up tight and drive that nail home as we say yep. because when you do it's going to really make it look bad Ooh. and you don't want anybody to see such a wonderful job you did and make it look like an amateur did it <laughs> that's true that's, that's right. true you all it takes is leave about it. off the last whack of that nail that's and right. you'll be all right. right don't take it all the way to the bottom yeah. We've got to take one more commercial break and remind everybody of our third uh, title sponsor, and that is Quality Outdoor Products. Mm. Instead of going to all the trouble of vinyl siding that, that, that building out back and making it look nice, hey, just knock it over and put you up a new metal one. You could. Yeah. And, and you don't have to worry about driving that nail home because there's no nails in that. You That's put true. screws in. Yep. Yep. And uh, you know, use those little what they call grommets and little rubber washers on the bottom of that screw. You know, this is one application with computers and technology that, that works. It does. Because so you can go out there. Let's, let's say you need a building to, to put your boat in one end of it and your tractor in the other end of it. And then you'd like to kind of like have a little man cave there in the middle. Mm -hmm. They can do that for you. They can. You can sit down at that computer with them, and they'll go through it and say, well, how much room you got, what we're going to do here, what we're going to do there. And they'll draw that thing out on the computer, and they start feeding that metal through the machines. The next thing you know, your trailer's loaded, and uh, they're following you to your house to put it up. It just fascinates me how they can stick a little flat piece of metal in one end of something that comes out with a design on oh, the yeah. end, yeah. and every piece is identical. Yep, cloning. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about the only kind of cloning I think I like. That's true. That's but, yeah, they true. can do that, and everything fits. They got all the accessories. They even got, if you got a little crack, they even got the same color caulking to squirt in the hole. There you to, go. To make it look nice around your doors and your windows. You can just kind of lick a finger and wipe it wipe down. It and Smooth it off. It, yeah. It's all good, and, yeah. and they're good at what they do. They can do it to where you can do it, or they can bundle it up, like you said, in your trailer. And uh, take it home, and they got some other people that can come out and right. put it up, which you better let them do it anyway. I think so, yeah. too. Yeah, and if you just need roofing, you need to re-roof that house, you're thinking metal is the way to go, you're probably right. And they can do that for you, too. All of those now are what they call standing seams or stand seams. Yeah. So that you don't see any of the fasteners when everything is said and done. It's just a very, very smooth. 50-year cool warranty. I'll never live to right. have it wore or out. There you go. There and, you go. Uh, but that, that's what, what everybody needs, and that's a good thing to have. And we got it right here in Jackson, Tennessee. You know it. Out at Three Way, Quality Outdoor Products, 888-485-5372. we got two more minutes, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. We are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. 
give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org. This is Arkansas. And so is this. And this. It's a place where your adventures can lead to wonders thousands of feet below ground or to views high above it all. Arkansas is full of things you've never seen and things worth seeing again and again. So if you're looking for a place to create legendary stories or just make lasting moments, it's all right here. This is Arkansas. This is the natural state. Listening to Tricks of the Trade on 93.1-731-410-7560 gets you into the uh, Victory Honda text line, 731-891-6161, direct to the phone boards, and uh, we'll go back to John. A couple of little things I want to kind of wrap things up with along yeah. the plumbing line this morning All right. that we've run into quite a bit here lately, and don't know why things happen in bunches like they do, but... A lot of people here on new houses have been having trouble with their faucets. They'll go into like the bathroom faucet one day and uh, they'll turn it on and they got just a little dab of water maybe coming out of the hot side where it's full blast out of the cold side. Right. And uh, they'll look underneath the sink and to the stop. They'll think, well, maybe it's partially turned off or something. They'll open it up, but there's no difference. As we go out and try to service these things, as I've told you, they've made faucets entirely too technical nowadays. <laughs> it's just, there's too many things that could happen. But one of the things that I'm finding that is happening is, is human related. And that is, you know, b- back in the day when uh, you wanted to put two pieces of pipe together that screwed together, you took a little pipe dope right, and you'd put around it. And you'd screw it together and you'd tighten it down with your wrenches and all's good with the world. Right. Well, now they come up with this um, so-called tape now, Teflon tape, that you'll wrap around your threads. And uh, that's good stuff, too, until you use a little too much of it and let it go over the end of the pipe. And as that stuff wears off... With water shooting through it, a piece of right. that Teflon will break loose, oh. go all the way to your faucet, and clog things up. I pulled a ribbon of Teflon about nine inches long with a pair of tweet pulled it out with a pair of tweezers out of a set of faucets the other day. The other thing you'll run into is too much pipe dope. Yeah, and they'll let that pipe dope get over into the uh, the uh, the pipes, and when the water shoots through it, it'll go straight up to your faucet. Or you'll stop because those holes are smaller than your pipe diameter is. Yeah. And it will sure clog things up in a hurry. Ooh, I hadn't thought about that. So oh, be careful out there when you're doing some of this do-it-yourself stuff to, right. you know, less is best when it comes to the pipe dope. Just get it covered. Don't just gunk it Don't on Don't gunk there, it up. You know? Okay. One last text. We've got just enough time. Uh, I think uh, this says, speaking of outhouses, have you seen a two-seater? I saw one years back, and I never really have accepted what that meant, shoulder to shoulder. And then he says, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that tells how close your family is. But that's, exactly that's mainly right. for young'uns, people with a bunch of young'uns that go out, and uh, you, you'd potty train it. You, you could, mom or dad could be on one while Junior and, and uh, Sissy's on the other one over there, and uh, you can kind of teach things back then. It was mainly for for families that had larger families. And uh, the biggest thing that they used to have one on the, let's see, there was the shepherd and the tailor on the ferry that crossed the Mississippi River back in my day. Mm -hmm. And there was one in there. Of course, when you went, things went down, it went right into the Mississippi River, which is probably why it never clears up. There's been so much (laughs) of that put in there. But, uh, you know, the only thing about an outhouse is you don't have a flush handle. That's true. There you go. That's true. Not necessary. Not necessary. It's all down there. Okay. We got one last text that just came in. And Texter, I'm going to pass this along to John off air. And uh, we'll see what we can get uh, get done for you there. This has been Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday with John Allen. John, have a great weekend, man. You too. Head on downtown this weekend.